So first off, how was the show last night in Calgary? Did it go well? Yeah, it was really fun. It was a big, dirty, fun rock show. Right on. And now you're doing it again tonight. Uh, we're very excited to have you back in Edmonton. It's been a couple years for you guys, but just a couple months for, for you, Travis. A love affair with this city and the music that you make. Yeah, yeah. we were just here like what, a month ago with Transplants. It was fun. We had a blast. Yeah, I heard the crowd was nice and rowdy for you. Yeah, Did transplant you shows are always rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah. I want to congratulate you guys for having uh, the merch. Most likely to not get hired if you wear to a job interview. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, quite a few of those. That. How awesome is it to see grown men sporting merch like that when you, you look out into the crowd? Uh, it's very gratifying. It's very gratifying as an artist to see, uh, to see our work reflected in that manner. Yes. It's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. It says quite a bit. Uh, Blink-182 have been around for 21 years now, and it's a really... Who's counting? Yeah. <laughs> there are this rare breed, this pop-punk uh, movement that came out of the 90s and into the early 2000s. A lot of the bands faded away, but Blink-182 not only did not fade away, their fans still come out to the shows in full force, but you're picking up new fans along the way. Uh, what do you say about the, the staying power of, of your band? Uh, well, I think we've always pushed ourselves to, um, you know, to progress and to take the art seriously. And I think there's uh, something that we did that related to a kind of a culture of suburbanites that um, that just really it just resonated at the time. I think maybe it was a lot of luck for us, a lot of timing. Uh, but it, I think because of that, uh, we've been able to to really have a relationship with with those people for a long time. I also think that we provide T-shirts that they like to wear in front of their parents and. Uh, to jobs, but um, I don't know. I mean, it's weird because we we toured with a lot of punk bands that we looked up to. I mean, I was listening to early Blink stuff and listening to old like Descendant stuff, and I was kind of like, wow, there's not too much different, you know. And in uh, in in, uh, in in it's I don't know. So to us, we 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 grabbed a lot from our heroes, you know. And um, but it's cool that you know that we might have opened some doors for some other people or. Whatever, but there was a, gr a lot of really great bands that came out of our genre, you know, and it wasn't our genre, it was a genre that was well along before we got a part of it, but um, uh, we're just thankful that we can even still do this, I guess. Is it hard to wrap your mind around the fact that uh, you guys are playing songs now as grown men that you wrote as kids, and people, you look out into the crowd, they're still singing along, they're still moshing around to your music? Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's, uh, it's very humbling. It's very, uh, I don't know, it's... it's uh, I can't speak to why we're able to still do this at this point, but it's really cool that there's people that are coming to the shows that have been coming to the shows for decades and people that it's their first Blink show or their first concert and are singing songs that we wrote 15 years ago. It's great. It's really, uh, it's really a blessing. To, to add, I mean, considering that our band is as old as some of the people here, I think there a lot of science can, can prove that our music actually impregnated those people. And these children <laughs> were actually born... Out of, of our out of our music. Our music was the seed that penetrated the vulva of many. <laughs> Conceived, raised, yeah. and now entertain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, see, you look at Blink-182, and it's got a very, very unique sense of humor, a lot of fun in this band. And you look at your other projects, Angels and Airwaves, Transplants, uh, the production work that you do. Uh, is this just an outlet for just part of your personality that it just seems like a lot of fun to go out there on stage and perform together? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like that for all of us. We all have side projects and... But this is definitely a big piece of who we are, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And finally, because I know uh, you guys got to get going, I got to ask, because it kind of came out a week or two ago of Blink-182 album coming in 2014. Any nuggets of what's going on behind the scenes? Uh, we are talking about going into the studio sometime in the new year. We haven't figured out the details of it yet. I think that's part of the mission on this tour is to figure out what our recording schedule is going to be. Uh, but we've committed ourselves to um, releasing new music in 2014, and that's, that's what we plan to do. Uh, is logistically, because I think you two live in Los Angeles and you live in London, mm -hmm. how does that work? I fly out to Los Angeles. A lot of flyer miles. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you have a PhD in killing time on a plane. I'm great at uh, wasting time, just in general. Like, I, like, on tour, I can sit in a hotel room for nine hours, no problem. I can sit on an airplane overnight, I'm good. A lot of staring, I'm really good at staring <laughs> at my fellow passengers. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming and playing Sonic Boom this year. I know there are thousands upon thousands of people just outside these doors who are excited to, are? to see you tonight. <laughs> very excited to see you, as are we. So. Thank you very much for taking the time, guys. Thanks. I really appreciate it.